All right, man. Lions fans, we back with another line video, double video right here. We talk about uh Lions signing another rookie, John Panisi, out of Utah. Um, but first, let's talk about the Lions uh, being reported by New England outlet to, you know, basically do a joint practice with the Patriots for the 55th straight year. Uh, we played them in preseason this year. So hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Check out our Detroit Lions talk playlist for more videos like this. Check out our Lions one-on-one -on -one playlist. We did Lions Live, so we up to episode 14. Uh, so I've been very, very consistent on the Lions live streams. And I got Mason here with me today. Look at Mason. Bad puppy Mason. But, uh, but yeah, once again, they planning on doing a joint, you know, practice with New England. I guess the NFL is going to have to clear it as we get closer to preseason the season. We know what the protocol will be for how the NFL is going to handle the coronavirus or will they have a vaccine uh, by that time. Who knows? Uh, I know right now the NFL, they are kind of testing uh, surgical masks that go on the, uh, the face masks of the NFL players. They're looking into that. Um, so really don't know how it's going to go down during joint practices or will they have an opportunity to even play preseason on time. So uh, we pretty much got to see how that's going to uh, uh, boil down. But, you know, we see them every year. This year be different. Be no Tom Brady. Uh, Jordan Stidham did very, very well versus the Lions last year, if my memory serves me correctly. But they just love the Patriot way, man. And I just think that's pretty much the going to be Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia's downfall. They're trying to do everything uh, that Bill Belichick done and do it the way Bill Belichick's done it. So I, I really ain't never been a fan of that. Uh, anywhere the Patriot way went, it hasn't worked in the NFL. Brian Flores down in Miami is probably going to have the best success um, Charlie Weiss went to Notre Dame and think he was at Kansas and didn't work. McDaniels didn't work. It's not working for Bill O'Brien down there in Houston, even though he keep getting payday after payday. Um, but you know, it'd be a good look. It should be a little bit different this year. Uh, New England is not as talented ha as they've been in years past. And they weren't that talented last year offensively, but they still got the defensive mad genius and Bill Belichick. But, you know, I don't understand why is this basically got to be a tradition to keep, you know, practicing, the Patriots, you know, you know what they're going to bring to the table. You've been there for many, many years. If you buy a point at Matt Patricia, I can see doing joint practices with, you know, whoever else on, on the preseason schedule, but they do this every year and don't nothing come of it, but get beat down every year. You know, it ain't really working. You get a different look, you know, Jordan Stidham put him on fire last preseason, man. But you know, this is what the lions are choosing to do. They just want to be the Patriots so bad, but they had other joint practices uh, I know Aaron Rodgers wasn't a fan of the joint practice last year, um, you know, but it's good to kind of see somebody else. But if you see the same people every year, you know, how is it helping you? I can see if it shows some type of benefit, you know, for, you know, down the line. But they lost the last two years doing joint practices with the, with the Patriots. You know what they're going to do. You They know what you're going to do. I would, pre I would prefer them to do some different joint practices with other teams. But, you know, they just love the Patriot way. We obsess with the Patriot way. Um, in Detroit, and you know, this is just the way it's, it's probably gonna be for a while until Bob and Matt Patricia move on. But they keep scheduling us to pay the Patriots in, in preseason, man. And I really don't get that, but I guess ge you know, the geography of it, we close to New England, so you know, we can't play Cleveland every year, we can't play, you know, obviously the other teams that's close to us, you know, Pittsburgh and the Eagles, you know, but we can't play Minnesota, Chicago, Green Bay in the preseason because they're divisional foes, so. Um, you know, so it's in the works for them to do joint practices. They're already talking about, you know, doing that uh, in New England. Uh, I'll let I'll put that article link in the description. Uh, John Panisi out of Utah. Uh, I get Utah and Utah State mixed up, so hopefully I got it right. I think they, uh, this is Utah University. He was a six round draft pick. He signed a deal last year. A guy that was slotted in that same position. He had a, over two, two point some million dollar contract and 160, 68. Hold on, hundred hundred and sixty thousand dollar contract, only almost one hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollar contract he had last year on the book. So um, John Panisi gonna get a nice little payday. He gonna get a, cu a couple hundred, almost a couple hundred grand in his pocket, and um, uh, you know he gonna be vital to what they do. He was a bully at the next level. He got low. He low. He's shorter than you know most defensive tackles and most offensive linemen at six one. But that's what gave, you know, John Randall and that's what gave Warren Sapp more leverage to pass rush. He was known for dominating, dominating lower opposition. We'll see if he bring that same speed and strength and twitchiness to the D-line because I think the Lions are, are banking on him 
Um, they banking on Nick Williams from the Chicago Bears uh, to really come in and provide, you know, some stability in the second layer of that defensive line. So the Lions don't count on a lot of young guys to back up Sheldon and back up Deshaun Hand, and even to back up the ends. You know, you count on Okora, you count on um, uh, uh, the Brian character that came from Clemson. So you know, Panisi going to have a very, very interesting, you know, role in this team, especially if injuries come in there. So we'll see if he'll be able to dominate like he did in Utah, but I think Utah is in the Pac-12 now, so, you know, they assume that when he step up in this level, he won't, according to a scout report, he won't dominate this level of opposition, but, you know, the Lions got a second rookie done, um, you know, they agreed to principal, to principles to a contract, so when he they fax it over, or when they have him come in, when the facilities open, um, he'll be able to go in there and do his thug thizzle and sign that contract, so uh, to move on to the next topic, um, the Lions won't be opening facilities right now. NFL, some facilities are open, so the Lions will continue to do virtual um, offseason right now because Gretchen Whitmere hasn't opened back up the state. Texas will be opening back they open up day uh, sports events May 31st, so we're a little bit behind the curve due to Detroit having a very, very high um, you know coronavirus rate. Sunday was the first day that they didn't have any deaths to report, and after Sunday, well, Monday, Gretchen Whitmere actually said that she's going to start opening up restaurant bars and retail stores to 10 or less crowds. So they're making progress. So uh, the Lions will be at a disadvantage with other facilities getting to open. I think the NFL should not open other facilities until every every team facility can be open at one time. Mike Tomlin said that I think they, the Lions are at a disadvantage uh, due to, due to you know, if Pittsburgh able to open up or Houston able to open up. And they're able to have their players come in, even if it's to a minimum, that's still an advantage. The NFL should not open every facility up until every facility has been cleared in, in by their state. You know what I'm saying? Now, Gretchen Whitmere say, all right, y'all can open up y'all facility, Detroit, by these guidelines. That's cool. The L.A. County is going to be under you know lockdown for a minute. It's not going to be till August 1st, they said, but it's probably going to be until August 1st. They can just give it to them in increments, you know. Every two, three weeks, they're going to extend it. That's how they're going to do it if you're out there in L.A. But they let the Los Angeles Lakers open up their practice facility to a minimum. So the Lions could be at a disadvantage, um, like a mug, man. And that's the, that's what Patricia and Bob Quinn don't need because you count on a lot of first- and second-year players to come in, a lot of developmental players to come in and step up this year. You count on Hawkinson. You count on, you know, Tavai. These dudes need to be in a classroom. You count on two rookie guards. And Stenberg, who signed this contract, who's the first rookie known to sign this contract, waiting on Jonah Jackson, you counting on him, you counting on Okuda. They need that classroom time, and they need that practice field time, and they need that coaching. You know what I'm saying? Them mental reps is just as important as those physical reps, and you need both of them. So right now, right now you know, other teams are going to be open up to a minimum. Matt Patricia announced that, you know, he said in uh, on one of the sports talk shows, on a on the AM radio in Detroit, I can't remember WMJ was a nine fifty or something like that. He said that basically they gonna remain shut down and they gonna abide by Gretchen Whitmere and what she had to say. And you know you can't get mad at it at all. You can't you can't get mad at it. Um, player safety first. Um, you don't want to go against the, the governor. You don't want to seem to be you know pro Trump or Republican or you don't want to see one of those be perceived as one of those people that went down to the Capitol building with that gun. And politics in the workplace is very, very touchy. Not saying that's your preference, but you don't want to show a political hand uh, in this situation if you're the Detroit Lions. You know what I'm saying? You know, but at the same time, I do think that the NFL need to open up each facility at once. You know, you know, it shouldn't go by. Oh, you can open up. No, nah, everybody need to be on the even playing group field. But we know from, excuse my neck. Well, I got a bad neck. Okay, wait till my massage therapist open back up. But you know. You all know the NFL ain't no even playing ground. We see we get jobbed by the refs all the time. Um, still mad about the Green Bay game at Green Bay this season. But, you know, we know it's not an equal playing ground for the NFL. And the NFL don't really care about small markets like Detroit or, or markets like Detroit. But, hey, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think about uh, the, pa the Lions and Patriots planning a joint practice for like the third year in a row. Let me know what you guys think about John Panisi signing his rookie deal. He uh, 160 eight thousand dollars richer almost one hundred seventy thousand dollars richer shout out to him I'll go ball out young fella and then ball out on the field too and uh, what you think about the nfl uh not opening all the teams facilities together and some people getting an advantage but the lions 
not going to open up right now due to, you know, the stay, the state stay at home order. It's a uh, Motor City Sports Talk. Let me know what you guys think. I put the article link in the article links in the description. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you got business questions, inquiry, response, your video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel? Cash App, PayPal, description. The best way to donate is to share the video. Please hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, comment. Uh, if you need to get at me directly, my Twitter is the fastest way. If you want to make a donation to the channel, share, share the video, and check out my other channel, Goodfellow Sports TV, more sports, music, news, and entertainment. One time for the one time, Mercy Sports Talk. We go.